Welcome back into another episode of the Huskers Radio Network podcast and another newcomer episode introducing you to the newcomers of Nebraska volleyball. Today we're chatting with Andy Jackson out of Colorado, middle blocker, but just chatting with you from Colorado. This was listed on your bio, but man, hmm. you moved around a lot. Yes, I did. <laughs> Tell us about where all you've lived and all of that. So my sister and I, we were born in Soldotna, Alaska. It's three hours south of Anchorage. And then from there, from my dad's job, we moved to Bakersfield, California. Then they found a house in Colorado. And then we had to move overseas to Dubai for my dad's job again. Um, we lived there for a couple years and then moved back to Colorado. And then we lived there since. Wow. And you're about to go visit Alaska because your grandparents still live there. Yes, ma'am. How nice is Alaska? Tell us about Alaska. Oh, my gosh. It's gorgeous. The weather right now isn't amazing. It's kind of gloomy in 50s. But the weather, I mean, good or bad, it's just gorgeous. And being there is so homey. Like, you're at your grandparents' house. You're down at the river fishing. You just can't beat it. So fishing, what else do you do while you're out there? Oh, man, so much. Like, a lot of outdoor stuff? <laughs> lots of outdoor stuff. Hiking, ride four-wheelers. Fishing, obviously. Um, we love going to Homer every year, so going to like the Spit, uh, Salty Dog Saloon. That's a huge one with like the money all over the walls and the ceiling. But other than that, like you just can't get bored in Alaska. So you're a big outdoors person, then? I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, when you fish, do you keep the fish? You throw them back? Uh, so you have a limit every day. Um, up until we catch our limit, we keep all of them, fillet them on the river, and then we'll go home. And we sometimes can them, smoke them keep them just as they are and grill them but oh that's incredible so yes well how is everything going for you this summer and uh, you've been here what now six months six how are you months. settling in uh it's going great uh the adjustment has been really good i honestly expected it to be a little more stressful than it was but i think having the other freshmen here with me was a really nice support group and it definitely helped a ton um workouts in practice they've been going great obviously they're tough and challenging but that's the only way to get better so Growth isn't just straight up, you know, you got to have some up and downs, and yeah. I definitely think that's what I've experienced, but I've loved every minute of it. I love that. How nice was it to get here early and have the beach season to kind of get settled into things? It was very nice. It was a nice little step into Husker Volleyball. Obviously, it's outside, not inside, but it was just a great first step to take towards, like, becoming a Husker Volleyball player. I definitely got a taste of, like, the competitiveness of the team, the culture, which I really enjoyed because coming in from a small town, it's way more competitive, higher level, but it helped me adjust really well. You know, and we've talked to all the freshmen, and you guys all knew each other before you got here for the yes. most part, all played together with Team USA. So how helpful was that? You talk about being close and having a group mm -hmm. to, to come in and relate to. How helpful was that to have kind of already some familiarity with some teammates when you got here? Yeah, it was so helpful, especially... I think girls, a part of the reason that they're so scared to go to college at first is because they don't know the girls they're going in with. But for us, that wasn't the case. Like, I was excited to come because I knew the girls that I was coming in with. Like, I already had a really good relationship with the team. And so getting to experience coming in with girls that you're already best friends with, like, it's just like going to college with your best friends. So you recently get the news that Jordan Larson is joining, joining the coaching staff. Yes. How, what was that news like getting that? It's... Incredible. I mean, you have an Olympian coming to join your staff and get to train you guys. As a middle blocker, I won't get to work with her as much, but the opportunity is still incredible. Like, she has so much feedback to give, regardless of if you're an outsider or not. So it'll just be awesome getting to work with her. Well, tell us about your recruiting story, how you found landed on Nebraska. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's interesting because the other day I was going through my notes and I had been looking at the colleges that I was interested in and Nebraska wasn't even on there <laughs> out of like shoot I think there were like 35 schools on there and I had never really been in contact with Nebraska just because I was so dead set on Texas <laughs> like a lot of people so um, coming June 15 I had just got back from a camp from Texas it did not go well very poor experience for me like playing wise I did not play well um, but I think God works in mysterious ways and it was all meant to be because then on June 15 I had a call with coach Cook and I just instantly knew that that's who I wanted to play for obviously I hadn't really shown them a lot of interest and so I felt bad because they had been looking at me and I was just kind of being a little bit standoffish because I was so dead set on Texas but 
after talking with coach, I just knew like that's a program I wanted to play for. That's a culture I wanted to be a part of. And like, who doesn't want to play for Husker Nation? <laughs> like getting to play at the Bob in front of 8,000 people. So um, I had definitely kept in touch with them after that. And on July 14, after Dream Team Camp, I just, I committed because after Dream Team, I just knew that's where I want to be. Okay, so I've asked this to a couple of your teammates, but we, we hear that a lot, that players come to Dream Team Camp and then they commit. So what mm -hmm. is it about this camp that you, it, it allows you to, I guess, see what potentially could be if you join Nebraska Volleyball? Yeah, I just think you get to come in, you get to play in the Bob at such a high level. Obviously, there's a lot of recruits there. And some of them could be your future teammates. And so getting to connect with them there and kind of get a taste of what it would be like, it just makes you realize that that's where you want to be. That's what you want to be a part of. And you have a connection to a former Husker, right? Yes, Christina Hotelling? Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, so she played a huge role in my recruiting. Like I said, I was so dead set on Texas. So I wasn't really looking. And I kind of just thought, I don't know. Like, I have such a small name. I don't know if Nebraska even knows who I am. So. I did a clinic with her because she does work at my club and after that she was like are you looking at Nebraska and I was like <laughs> oh you know not really like I just don't think they know who I am and then she was like I'm gonna text coach cook if that's okay with you and I was like well I'm not gonna say no <laughs> <laughs> so she had texted coach and just put in a good word for me and it just kind of went off from there like obviously with the rules of NCAA we couldn't text like directly but from there, like, there was interest shown between both sides. You know, she was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, and we had her mm -hmm. on, and she was talking about you mm -hmm. and her kind of role in that. What did she tell you about Nebraska uh, when, throughout the process? Oh, man, all good things. I know she loved it. She loved playing under Coach Cook, and just the good word that she put in. Obviously, she was honest, and she said that it's a grind, but it's a grind that you want to be a part of, and it's going to be hard, but for all the right reasons. And she just made it sound like that's a place you want to play at. And just not only does it shape you as a volleyball player, but as a person as well. And then from like a student standpoint, just the opportunities that they give you, it's, you can't, you can't beat it. You know, when you come in as a freshman, I'd be interested to get your perspective on this and the legacy, like players like Christina Hotelling, Jordan mm -hmm. Larson, and, and all these players. What is it like joining that? from the start, you know, I mean, do you, yeah. do you grasp it at the beginning? Is it something that you understand kind of the legacy that you're joining? I would say yes. You know that you're joining this amazing tradition and legacy and that it just makes you want to grind even harder so that you can join it. I love that. So we were, I was talking to you before we started recording. I said, are you a Denver Nuggets fan? Yeah. And you said you kind of jumped on the bandwagon, but yeah. you are a fan of a different sport. Yes, hockey. Yes, you're a big Edmonton Oilers fan. I am. Which is not something you normally hear a lot when you ask nope. people what's your favorite sport. Not nope. always around here do you hear hockey. How would you get into <laughs> hockey? Uh, well, my dad grew up playing it, and so I always had that little connection with it. I know he really loved hockey. Um, watching the Avs every once in a while, I know we would go to a couple games before they won the Stanley Cup and now it's filled and it's so hard to get tickets. Um, and then one night we were watching hockey and he introduced me to the Oilers and I just loved them. Like Connor McDavid, Zach Cassian, all of them. I love the team. <laughs> so I just started following them and now we always, my dad and I always text about them. We're like, are you watching the game? <laughs> and we're hoping next summer we can go catch a game. And hopefully they do really good in the playoffs. So, What is it about hockey that you like to watch? I think just the speed of it. It's very fast and it's a little bit aggressive. But I think <laughs> I enjoy that part of it. Obviously, like there can be fights and stuff. Um, I think it's just the speed, though. Like it's never, it never stops. Like it's just go, go, go. And the strategies that they use, obviously, it's so hard to be watching Connor McDavid. Like, he's so good. So is that your favorite sport outside of volleyball? I would say so. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what, what are the goals for the summer for you? What are you trying to accomplish before you guys hit preseason? Uh, for, like, personally or as yeah, a team? Yeah, personally. Uh, I would definitely just say get stronger, faster um, during our open gyms. I know I have some things that I'm working on. Like, obviously, I can't work with the coaches, but they have given me a list of things to work on. So... Just really honing in and focusing on those things. That way, when season comes around, I can be ready and just playing at the highest level that I can. What do you feel like it will take for you to be able to make an impact immediately as a freshman? Uh, be able to kill balls. <laughs> I think from a middle standpoint, it's very important that when your team is making those really hard digs and those amazing passes, and they're giving you an opportunity to hit the ball off of a perfect pass, like you have to be able to kill the ball. And defensive-wise blocking, just being able to slow balls down, get really positive touches off the block, 
because it helps your defense a ton. And obviously, we have very good defense behind us, uh -huh. but doing my part so that we can all just be a very good defensive team and offensive team. I love that. Well, I've asked everybody that's come in here, I've got to get your perspective on this too. You're playing a, playing a game inside Memorial Stadium. You find that out, and then you find out it sells out. Yep. Take me through the emotions of what that was like going through that. Oh, it's crazy. And I know the other day, Harper, Laney, and I, we were walking, we had conditioning inside Memorial. And so as we were walking in, I made the comment, can you guys believe every seat in here is going to be filled? And we just couldn't even. Walking in through that tunnel and just all those seats and how they're going to be filled, it's unreal. It's definitely nerve-wracking, but it's more exciting than anything. Oh, that gives me chills just, just thinking about that, right? I mean, the, a full stadium for women's volleyball, and mm -hmm. you're going to set a USA record and the collegiate record, all of that. I mean, it's got to be exciting for a freshman coming in, knowing that's the kind of fan support you're going to get night in and night out. Oh, absolutely. How much did that play a role in, in you wanting to play here at, at Nebraska? Huge. I think for women's sports, you still see that they're a little bit covered up by big mainstream things like ESPN and that. So coming in to a fan base where it doesn't matter that you're a female sport or like a female in a sport, they're going to sell it out every single time. They're going to do things like sell out Memorial Stadium to go and watch you guys because it, they just want to they watch women play sports and they know how important it is and how hard we work. And I love it. Like that's, I want to be a part of that. I want to set that trend and I want to start making women's sports more popular for people to watch. Oh, that's amazing. Andy Jackson, been, <clears throat> been great talking to you. Thank you so much for stopping by. And well, we can't wait, you. can't wait to see even more of you coming up here soon, about six or eight weeks. Yep, well, thank you for having me. And that is Andy Jackson, Andy Jackson, freshman middle blocker with Nebraska Volleyball. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Huskers Radio Network podcast. Make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode.